turn on some lights. I'm the new manager of the Paris Opera House, not a bloody owl. I did tell Mr. Bebbiano we were coming, sir. Not loudly enough, it seems. Now, come here. <laughs> what about my nose? Oh, bring it with you. <laughs> this is intolerable. It's my first day here, and I've been completely and utterly ignored. Ugh. Well, you're my secretary, Remy. Do something. How many steps are there, sir? Oh, I think five. Oh, six. <laughs> now get up and turn on some lights. Ah, well done, Remy. You see how easy it is when you try. Come on, you silly girl. We've turned the stage lights on. Now there's nothing for you to be frightened of. There you are. Nothing. And don't go spreading silly rumours. We have a new manager arrived today, and he's a pompous on the end. You're adored. I'm awfully sorry, sir. We weren't expecting you till later. Well, that's quite obvious. Now, well, what's all this about? I saw him, sir. I saw him. Clever as anything. Saw who? What is she talking about? Um, uh, nothing, sir. Imagination. And now it's present Miss Jam, a member of our former cafe, Mr. Richard, our new manager. No, I just... She says hello. Get up, get up, I hate fuss. In my previous capacity as president of the Northern Railways, I had it eradicated entirely. Where's my son? We've lost my son, Raoul! I was taking a deck over the auditorium, Dad. No need to panic. Oh, splendid, isn't it? Some of it. Personally, I've always thought of the Paris Opera House as being more, more... Bigger, sir. Quiet, Remy. Debian, why isn't it more... bigger? Uh, it's the lighting, sir. Our man, Mauclair, turns on the gas and the whole place is transformed. Speaking of lighting, Mr. Debian, that chandelier doesn't look too secure. I shan't tell you again, Ray. Debian, that chandelier doesn't look too secure. <laughs> I hope it is, sir. It must weigh half a ton. Precisely. What if it were to fall down? Fall down? Our chandelier? <laughs> what? On those seats there? <laughs> yes. Possibly there. Or there. Or even over there. Well, at least the cheap must be saved. <laughs> appear, Satan, appear! I am here! <laughs> Who the devil are you? Well spotted, sir. It is the devil. Never stop it, actually. Rehearsing for tonight's performance of Faust, <laughs> Mr. Lichard, and our new manager. Oh, Enchanter! Do you like the new entry? The producer wants me to make a sudden surprise, supernatural, out of the air from nowhere appearance, and I think it's radical. Incidentally, who's singing Faust this evening? I am. I always sing Faust. I only sing Faust. Well, I hope you sing it well. Sing it well? Of course I sing it well. I'm singing it, aren't I? We all sing well here, sir. In fact, we prepared a little musical introduction for you, sir. <laughs> Back into shape, and then we might forget the day.
she has a point, my friends. Don't meddle. But I mean, ghosts. <laughs> no such thing. You hear that, Phantom? It doesn't exist. You don't exist. What's that? Well, there you go. That's all. Are you sure? You didn't sound like your voice. You don't exist! <laughs> you don't exist. Exchange for youth and the love of the beautiful. 
beautiful marguerite. It begins with the old man cursing everything he once believed and deciding to poison himself, the mortal sin that invokes the devil. Oh, you saw the devil in his entrance earlier. Yes, that's what worries me. Managing the opera house is one thing, but having to watch the wretched stuff. It's the beginning, father.
Can you please tell me, is there another way into Miss Diane's dressing room? Through the chorus girl's room. room. Thank you. The chorus girl's room? Oh. <laughs>
Roach trying his vile tricks on me now, is he? <laughs> well, not for very much longer, Remy. Send for Miss Dye immediately. Oh, may I, sir? <laughs> I need to get to the bottom of this now, Jerry. Nobody swindles this theatre while I'm in charge. Oh, come on, you've got to let me in. I've just been waiting for a ah, now. Come in, Miss Dye. Miss New Peach. Oh, you're not Miss Dye. Miss who? I'm sorry, sir, this is the groom. The who? The groom, sir. Well, you'll fetch Miss Dye in. You'll be part of the stables, sir. What stables? The ones we keep the effing horses in. Who do you like? Do you need much, Jeff, or what? I mean, leave it out, you'll get right on my west end. Any more of this, I'll take it down from the back to Oxford. True! <laughs> Why is he talking in this extraordinary way? He's English, sir. <laughs> We always have an Englishman to look after the horses. They get on so well together. <laughs> what your horses? The ones we kicked in the stables. What's the matter, Brian? Take a bang off. You can't put an opera on with nothing but a load of music and singing, sir. The public won't stand for it. You must have hundreds of extras, thousands of costumes, acres of scenery, twenty-five minutes of ballet, and a horses. And where precisely are these stables? Uh, three cellars down, right? Like three. How many cellars are there? Five. Yeah, we don't count the bottom one. It's the one just over the lake. No one goes there no more. Lake? What lake? The underground lake that this place was built on. How did you get it, John? But it's where <laughs> the secret police dropped the bodies after the last uprising. There's a manhole in the floor of the bottom cellar, and the lake is full of bones. <laughs> Now, if you'll excuse me, I have to see to the usher's soup. I thought I was having trouble with this day. Miss Oom? Look! Will you kindly come to the point and tell me why you're here? All right. All right. He's Nick one of me all see. Who has? There's ghost as. Seems in me less white stand here, I eat that you? Listen! You've got just one chance of prolonging your employment here, and that is, if you tell me the whole story, but in a manner befitting this noble establishment. <laughs> All right then, mate, if that's what you want. Light, last night, harming the sellers, black as pitch. The gas is out. Oh, my Claire, the light in feathers comes to sleep again. No doubt. Oh, that once there's this compunction, seems as best as that disturbance. Something's making it a turn, but it's fine. On the line, I can see a William sign. Clearly, on the seat and back. Somebody's trying to make a monkey out of me. 
Somebody is trying to pull the wool <laughs> over my eyes. Somebody's pretending to be a ghost, but I've seen through it. <laughs> I just think I, I'd be so fair to be uh, a put-up job, a plot between you and your cleat, your clack, a friends, to see that you sing the role of Marguerite in place of the great Carlotta again. Now, what do you have to say to that? Completely untrue, sir. <laughs> Raoul, intercede for me. Under these past days. It's been so cold, so cruel. Help me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm afraid I can't. You see, even my unfortunate son no longer takes your part. And that will be all this day. Your contract is terminated. You will leave the opera house immediately. <laughs> well, that is the end of that. As for box five. I shall use it whenever I please. <laughs> it shall be my private box. Ah, ghosts indeed. Some people will believe anything. <laughs> As for you, young man, I'm glad to see you've come to your senses as far as this girl is concerned. You've obviously been, uh, been seeing her behind the flag. She loves another. I was thinking of going to the North Pole. Why? It's never been done before. I see. <coughs> but tell me, uh, what's put you in such a foul temper? You're perfectly cheerful this morning. I will show you. Read that. <coughs> Dear Mr. Richard, since you chose to define me, I now give you a clear warning. You must call back Miss Dye immediately and tell her she's not seen that her. Sing to the night or suffer the consequences. Remy! You are also reminded that my allowance of 20,000 francs for the current month is still due. Oh, gee. No, no. Did you put this letter on my desk? No, sir. There is only one explanation. Miss Dye was suspended there. Quickly, Remy, after her. But, but father. 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 I've seen the way.
A selfish fool. I, I was jealous. Jealous of who? The person you sing for. How do you know about that? I followed you towards dressing room after you ran off that night. And? I heard you sing to him. I didn't mean to eavesdrop my darling. I simply have to know who it is. You may not believe me. I? Disbelieve you? And I will tell you, it was my angel of music. Christine, you made fun of me. An angel of music. My father told me about him when I was little. There's an angel of music in heaven, he said. And when I die, I shall send him down to teach you to sing. And it actually happened. My angel of music came to me, and under his guidance, I flowered, I prospered. Oh, Christine, there is no such thing as an angel of music. Oh, but there is, uh, there is. Only he won't appear while you're here. Oh. You must pretend to go away. Oh, uh, oh please, Raoul. For me. <laughs>
Somebody just tried to kill me. Well, he came to the right place. <laughs> <laughs> now look, he's wearing a bloody white horse straight across my cemetery. But he won't get out that way because he's entering the wall. <laughs> Over the wall. That horse will be seasoned on that. And yes, by thunder book, the stones be moved and the graves empty. Angel of music, I think not, my fine friend. Oh, wait a minute, I haven't got a minute. I'm sketching the opera house immediately. God knows what's going on there. Oh, <laughs> Pally... Pally... Achi? 
Oh my goodness! <laughs>
up on the roof at this time of night. I might ask you the same. No. Oh. I've worked here for years now. I let me do as I please. I shouldn't stay up here too long, though. It gets a bit nippy, this I <laughs> Oh, my God. 
come. My coach will be at the rear of the building immediately after tomorrow night's performance, and we shall be gone far, far away from this devilish place.
the ghost box. That's isn't it? So that's why we're in this box. You believe in him now? I didn't say that. <laughs> I say, who's that sinister looking fellow here? Some Persian prince. He was here the night Carlotta got chandeliered. <laughs> he insisted on coming again. He must want to see fast pretty badly, that's all I can say. Well, good. Only the last bit to go now. Yes, we're in for a treat. This is where we juvenated fast at the ash. Here again, because this bloody opera never gets finished. <laughs> what happened? I didn't notice. I was singing. But she's completely disappeared. Oh my God! Of course, it's him. Congratulations, everybody. Here's the auditorium. She must be found. It's a matter of life and death.
sleeper again. I'll have his guts for garters. <laughs> My Claire! Ah! No Claire? It's a bit of a deep sleep even for you. Ow! Now what is it, Father? I hit my head again. Some sort of a, a metal handle. <laughs>
Did you, um... <laughs> Did you win him? There is no blood. Sign of any. Only these blank words. Damn the brute. He really is a ghost. Damn you! Damn you! What is it? What do you see? Oh, 
You! Yes! He was badly wounded, Phantom, but you failed to kill him. For Remy is one of those rare people with his heart on the... Um, on the... Uh, other side. Go! Leave us up to me. There is one tale of your infamy I did not relate. Murder of our mother and father! I knew they never fell off that title. You greased it, you horror! Then you me for what I am! Nobody must live who sees my face! Swag, stop making me perisher! I live only to this day because you thought your assassin succeeded. And now... The final drama! No! Christine, don't move! I can get her on myself before any of you move! Well, well, I swear I'll never touch another drop! Gah! Oh, Christine, even my last happiness is to be denied me! We must die unwed! No. Please! Don't do it, sir! Remember, I do this out of love. I'm not all master. Farewell, Christine! <laughs> Somewhere, I suppose. It's in his all, Father. It's in his all. Hey, Mr. Rapp! It's what he's saying! 